Respiratory tract infections, both upper and lower, are probably the most common causes that people get sick. Starting with upper respiratory tract infections, or the common cold, is caused by over 200 different kinds of viruses. And there are many that occur. So in the US, something like 1 billion colds occur every year, which means that every person is getting several each year. And it also affects the economy, something like $40 billion of both direct and indirect costs. Lower respiratory tract infections are much more serious. They're responsible for up to 10% of emergency room visits and 3 million deaths every year around the world. The good news is that exercise can help reduce the risk of contracting one of these illnesses. In this video, I'm going to go over five main concepts, including how much exercise you'll need to do and the theories behind how exercise reduces the risks of getting sick. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in New York. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. There was a study that looked at a thousand people and what they found were those people who were engaged in exercise, it's aerobic exercise, five days a week or more, had about 40% fewer days of being sick with an upper respiratory tract infection compared to people who were sedentary. That's amazing. Additionally, for those people who did get sick, okay, the severity of their symptoms was dramatically reduced in those people who were very physically active. And they say about 30 to 40% reduced severity of symptoms. What about older people who, because of their reduced immune system, are at higher risk of getting infection? Does exercise help there? And the answer is yes. So there was a study that looked at older people, average age in their 70s, and what they found was that those people who were sedentary, about 50% of them during the course of their study contracted an upper respiratory tract infection. But those people who were involved with a walking exercise program, about 30 to 40 minutes, five days a week, at a moderate intensity, they actually, only 20% of them uh, got an upper respiratory tract infection. So we went from 50% of people who were sedentary getting an upper respiratory tract infection all the way down to 20% in those people who are over 70 but were being active with a walking program five days a week. So how does this work? Why would exercise reduce the risk of infection? So there are some theories. One of them is that part of our immune system is we make uh, mucosal secretions. These are secretions by the nose and the throat, the pharynx. And there are special substances called uh, IgA, which is a type of antibody that the body is making. And this is a first line defense preventing viruses and pathogens from getting in. And what they have seen is that people who are doing exercise have higher levels of this antibodies in this mucosal secretion. So boosting that first line of defense. Another theory is that stress, psychological stress, can reduce the immune system, making people more susceptible to getting sick. Now, interestingly, exercise in other studies has been shown to reverse or combat some of the physiological changes that stress can have on the body. And so the theory is that exercise can indirectly prevent uh, infections because it's helping stop the bad things that stress does to our body. There was actually a, a study of about a thousand university employees and what they found with those people who reported perceived stress in their lives had about two and a half times of a higher likelihood of getting an upper respiratory tract infection compared to those people who felt they weren't having stress in their lives. Now, what they ended up finding in these people with those who were doing exercise had about a 20% lower risk of getting an upper respiratory tract infection. But if someone was reporting stress and they were doing exercise, they actually found that the exercise reduced the risk of getting an upper respiratory tract infection by 40% in those people who reported stress. So these are some of the things that, uh, theories that explain why exercise may be helping fight infection. Lower respiratory tract infections also benefit greatly from exercise. Now we know from studies that exercise can reduce the risk of getting one of these infections and reduce the risk of dying from them. And we do know that these lower respiratory tract infections are very serious and can be lethal with something like 3 million people a year dying around the world from them. 
There was a study that looked at about a half a million people, and what they found was that those who were doing at least 150 minutes of exercise a week reduced their risk of getting one of these infections, like a pneumonia, by almost 30% compared to people who were not active. And those, again, people who were being physically active at 150 minutes reduced their risk of dying from one of these infections, again, like pneumonia, by 35% compared to those who were inactive. So how does this work? Why does exercise reduce the risk of getting and dying from a lower respiratory tract infection like pneumonia? So there are several theories. After we exercise, literally billions of lymphocyte cells, these are immune cells, go into the circulatory system, they move around, and these cells are primed for a fight looking to take on a virus. Once this happens, they are then redistributed into peripheral organs, like the lungs and the gut. And these are vulnerable areas where infection could come and they help patrol these areas and stop infection. Now, another theory is that people who are sick and have cardiovascular disease and diabetes and other problems, these people with medical comorbidities have a higher risk of getting sick. And we know that exercise can help reduce, prevent some of these problems, make them better. And so in an indirect way, exercise may be reducing comorbidities and therefore reducing infection. And the third theory is that exercise has been associated with a more favorable response to vaccines. Currently, the most effective means of protecting people, particularly older people from getting the flu, is through the flu vaccine. However, people who are over 70 notoriously have difficulty mounting an immune response and making antibodies after they get the vaccine, making it less effective. Now, we know, for example, young people often mount a very good response, but again, older people are not as effective and so may not be as well protected from the vaccine. Several studies have shown that older people who do exercise before they get the vaccine can actually boost their immune response and make more antibodies. And they've done studies that looked at people in their age around the 70s and found that doing several months of exercise and keeping up with an exercise program and then getting the vaccine, like a flu vaccine, they will mount a higher immune and antibody response compared to those people who are not physically active. What about doing exercise after the vaccine shot? So there was a study that looked at both flu vaccine and COVID-19 vaccine shots, and they assigned some people to start exercising within 30 minutes of the shot. And what they found with those people who were doing 90 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, like being on a stationary bike, that their levels of antibodies four weeks later were much higher than those people who did not do exercise afterwards. There's some concern that too much exercise may actually suppress the immune system. And we're talking about an extensive amount of activity, like running a marathon. Now, there are some studies that support this theory. And there was one of marathon runners and they found that about 13% of these athletes after the marathon, within a few weeks, ended up getting an upper respiratory tract infection. But those runners who didn't participate in the marathon, only 2% of them got an upper respiratory tract infection. So it would seem from here that these very high levels of exercise can suppress the immune system. Now, not all scientists agree with these theories, and there are other studies that they point to that may not agree with it. A word about older people. So as people get older, the immune system doesn't work as well as when they were younger, making them more susceptible to getting infection. And as we mentioned before, even their response to a vaccine won't be as good as when they were younger. So these are some of the issues. But in addition, there are many viruses that people get when they're younger, and these might be herpes or chicken pox, and, when, and they remain latent for many years, but sometimes when they get older and their immune system is suppressed a little bit, they will reappear. So for instance, chicken pox, older people may end up breaking out with shingles, which can be very painful. So there has been a study that was very interesting that was done in astronauts, and it showed that those who had higher levels of cardiorespiratory fitness actually reduced their risk by 40% of breaking out with one of these reactivations. And even if they did have a reactivation of a latent virus, their uh, 
blood tests showed that they were less infectious to other people. And so although cardiorespiratory fitness is uh, mostly controlled by genetics, being more physically active can actually improve someone's cardiorespiratory fitness. So for older people, particularly important that they remain physically active to keep up their cardiorespiratory fitness and also to help with their immune system. So let's wrap up this video and go over some of the key points. Number one, so how much exercise is needed to prevent a common cold or pneumonia? So about 150 minutes a week at moderate intensity is what we need to hit. Number two, exercise reduces the risk of getting an upper respiratory tract infection. And for those who do get one, it reduces their symptoms. Number three, exercise reduces the risk of getting a lower tract of respiratory infection, such as a pneumonia. And in those people who do contract it, it does reduce their mortality risk. Number four, exercising before and after vaccination can help boost the immune response. Number five, there is some controversy that doing too much excessive exercise may actually suppress the immune system and can lead to some increased upper respiratory tract infections. And number six, it is really critical for older people to maintain a very physically active lifestyle to help support their immune system and keep it running efficiently. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.